Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video as part of this series here. This is putting RD Pilot on cheap flight controllers in little planes. Uh, it doesn't have to be little planes, it's just when you're using a small flight controller, you can fit it in something like this AR Mini Wing. Now, this has had its maiden flight, so if you're interested in watching that, you can go and look at the previous video. But I'm sat here a couple of days after that maiden flight and just playing around and tweaking things, ready to go and film the auto tuning video. And one of the things that I have did in the past with APM and Pixhawk is you can download the log files. They're actually saved on the SD card in a Pixhawk and you can view them in Google Earth and it's pretty cool. It's a great way to kind of save all of your flight data and uh, it also allows you to see how well everything's behaving. Now, I didn't know whether this was gonna work on this model because this is my first time through with Ardu Pilot on an omnibus like this. So I've just tried it and it works. So I thought it was useful, I think, to put a little video together to show you how to access the log files, download them and then view them in Google Earth. I'm going to go through this at quite a pace, but by following along, you should be able to find each of the steps. But being able to view stuff in Google Earth and see exactly how the plane has performed is fab. So let's go on the computer and I'll show you how to do it. So here we are in Ardu Pilot. We haven't plugged the uh, Ardu plane in yet. So let me just do that. I haven't got my radio turned on. So you're going to hear all the beeping from the uh, buzzer. So there's the boot tone. <laughs> and there's a little noise saying, I'm not very happy. Uh, that's because my radio isn't turned on, but it's all booted. So we can connect. So if I just connect up, let's have a look at everything. There we go, all working, fab. Uh, no RC receiver, yes, we know about that, that's fine. So we want to go into these two parts get rid of that, uh, telemetry logs and data flash logs. Uh, we're going to download the data flash log via Mavlink and that's going to uh, give us a list of files. Now, because we've only had one maiden flight, these were all the arming checks I'd done. This is the actual flight. So what we're going to do is say download selected logs, click on that and it's going to download it. Now, obviously the amount of time it takes to download is going to depend very much on how long the flight was because as this thing's actually flying it's saving all the information down to the SD card. Now that not only includes all of the settings and things like the positions of the accelerometers and the compass bearing and the height and the GPS stats and the HDOP. So this is a great way if you're having a problem with a craft you can come back in here and you can do an awful lot with the logs inside Mission Planner. You can graph everything out and it is a great tool to make sure that everything's working. But let me just fast forward to the end of this little bit and let me just show you how you get hold of the data logs and what you can do with them in Google Earth. Now that's just finished, what I would probably recommend is um, take a note of where it's actually saved it. Uh, so it's gone into Users, Lead, Document, Mission Planner, Logs, Fixed Wing. Uh, you'll find that when it's downloading, it goes into the uh, the Mission Planner Logs file. And then when it seems to be downloaded, it pops it into the Fixed Wing directory. So if you go in there and you can't find it, you'll uh, that's where you need to be. We'll have a look at that in a sec. I'd recommend clearing all these logs out just because it's worthwhile making sure that you keep it nice and clean. Um, it's always fun when you get back and there's 32 log files on the SD card. Uh, they are dated, uh, but trying to find the one for the particular flight that you did on maybe a day can be a little bit exciting. So let me just close this out. We need to give it a little minute for the arrays to work. But what we'll do is we'll just um, have a look at this. now. We could do, like I said, we can do loads of things and going into terminal, you can actually um, play with the log browse and do loads of stuff, but we're not gonna bother with any of that. What we're actually gonna do is let me just open and show you where the log files are. So here we are uh, in the uh, documents mission planner folder. There's all the stuff for mission planner. There's the logs directory. And you can see here that we have a couple of extra logs, but you have fixed wing, motor roll, fixed wing, quadcopter and everything else. So we're going to go into fixed wing and just go in there. And if you order it by date, so there are all 
of the files that I've just downloaded. I'm recording this on the 4th of May, so that's them. One of them is a KMZ file. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that to the side, and I'm actually going to start Google Earth. And what the KMZ file is, it actually has all the coordinates that Google Earth wants to talk about. Now, uh, it's going to pop into temporary places. So what I would do is just get hold of your KMZ file, click it and drag it across, drag it into temporary spaces. So it said copy. And then what you'll find is that Google Earth will magically show you the flight let me just zoom in here so this is the flight that i did for the maiden flight that you saw a little bit of the footage on and you can see all of the height data and everything absolutely fantastic and each one of these little segments is actually uh, a set of data that we've got so let me just turn that around a bit more again let's just put yeah. that so it looks a bit complicated but if we do the drop down for the log you can see that there are actually several different parts let me put the plane. so there we go so this is the first part of the flight so what happened is i took off surprise surprise and then i did a nice gentle circuit just playing around with the plane then flew a little bit further out and then over here uh, this is fly-by-wire A mode. I went into loiter to test the loiter. Here's the loiter. Uh, so it didn't do bad, actually. Uh, if I just put this... Not bad at all. Um, you can see that that point here in the middle was the point I initiated the loiter. And if we get an idea of how wide that loiter is, it's about 200 feet-ish. Um, I, I bet if we go and check that in uh, the Mission Planner settings, that's roughly what it will be. But you can see here that it did a really nice job of prescribing a pretty good circle. Uh, heights varying a little bit, so we probably have to look at that as part of the tuning, make sure that that um, sorts it out. But that's pretty good, actually. And then the last bit popped it back into fly-by-wire array and had a whale of a time, flew flying all over the place. And you can see how high it was. And eventually, hopefully you can see here, uh, actually coming into land in that part of the field. And it's kind of coming into land where we kind of stood here. So hopefully that's interesting for you. Um, a really, really neat feature. But at each of these points, you can actually see exactly how everything is flying and how everything is behaving. So that's how you do it. Dead easy, just download the log files using Mission Planner and then you can kind of upload them into Google Earth and you can see exactly how everything was flying. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.